Now it's time for Touch Basin's Hole, where we meet people from all walks of life, those who have walked off the beaten path and have somehow found their way to our studio, thankfully for us here at Career 24. Today's guest has quite the tale. He went from practicing commercial law to now becoming one of the most influential creators on YouTube when it comes to the world of mixed martial arts here in Korea. Mr. Che Kim or Kim Tae Young, who runs the YouTube channel Chadoru, joins us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you, Cheng Ho. Okay, so from commercial law to YouTube, and not just any YouTube channel, but one about mixed martial arts that has nearly 300,000 subscribers now, over now, right? Uh, just under. Just under, yeah. right. That's quite a leap from law <laughs> to MMA YouTube. How did that all begin? Well, it's, it's actually a very interesting story because I started to produce videos as a hobby since I was a, a law school student. But back then it wasn't about MMA. It was about a variety of things like uh, my daily life, like video vlogs, mm. uh, playing video games, if you will, or playing the guitar. It ranged from topic to topic and it wasn't consistent. It was just a hobby. But one day I realized because I was into MMA so much, why not combine the two? Mm. And the rest is history, as you can see. Right, so you loved MMA. You've always had that love for it. Mm. How was it when you started making these MMA videos? Well, to be honest with you, at the time, YouTube was already saturated when I started making these mm. videos. So I was looking for a topic that no one would touch. And in Korea, thankfully at the time, no major channels were uh, committing mm. to MMA or martial arts. So I, I'm really into this subject and no one is showing that much interest in this field of YouTube. So why not give it a go and see how uh, people respond? And thankfully they did respond and I'm having a great time. <laughs> sure, I mean, you pursued a dream but still, giving up being a lawyer, that must be a big step. That yes. must have been quite daunting. Mm -hmm. how, how Was that an easy transition to make? No, no, it wasn't, to be honest with you. And especially my family. They, right, right, of course. They thought I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and partly they still do think I'm insane. And to be honest with you, they still hope that I would go back to being a lawyer. Right, yeah, but, but of I'm, course. And, and every day I tell them I've never been happier. Mm. And I would uh, hold on to this job as long as possible. And to be honest with you, the biggest challenges were everything was internal. It wasn't from other people or other uh, mm. outer stress uh, mm. per se, but it was about convincing myself. Mm. Like, am I really this person? Can mm. I be an entertainer? Can I be mm. creative? Mm. Can I be a narrator that people would uh, uh, people would listen to, for example? But I'm not sure if you're familiar with a clinical psychologist called uh, Jordan Peterson. Right, yes. Yeah. Yes, and of one of his quotes is that, before making a life-changing decision that you should always clean up your room. And at the time, I had no idea what he meant. Mm. And I thought, oh, I'm really having a hard time making that decision, so why not give it a go, right? Mm. And I cleaned up my room, and at the time, I found my old law textbook and then hit me. I remember why I started producing videos mm. and why I studied law. And that was because the reason why I chased law was for financial mm. security. And because the YouTube channel was picking up so greatly and I was enjoying it so much that it didn't matter anymore. And that's all the convincing that I needed. That is a very brave decision that you made and <laughs> thankfully it's working out. Did you, I know you gave it up to, uh, gave up being a lawyer to do this, but still, are you surprised the fact that you've been able to be so successful at this? Yes, to be honest with you, yes. Because like I said, it all started out as a hobby. I mean, I wasn't producing videos consistently. Sometimes I would produce once a day. Sometimes I would produce once every few months. But people started responding after two years that mm. I've started making YouTube videos. And because people like it, it gave me a little bit of uh, pleasure, if you will. Mm. It felt great. And the, the reason why I felt great was not because I was gaining this attention or attraction. It's because I could feel that people were gaining more uh, showing more interest in this mm. sport, which was still a very small, minor sport in Korea. And because I always thought these athletes, these professional fighters, they needed more recognition. They needed to be more appreciated. And if I could contribute to that, it would mean so much, uh, even more so than being a lawyer. So that's your uh, goals and hopes for your channel then, and not just for you to do something that you enjoy, but to give more exposure to MMA. Exactly, yeah. So to, to put it in one sentence, I would say I'm trying to popularize the sport. Mm. And I mean, there are a lot of talents in Korea. There are professional fighters, there are international fighters, there are people who are 
so good at fighting that if you put them against world-class fighters, they would have a great fight. But the problem is there is a huge lack of promotions and organizations in Korea. Mm. I mean, if you're a young fighter, you need these experiences. You need to build up uh, experiences in fighting in a cage in front of thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. I mean, that comes with experience. But because there is a lack of platform for these guys to perform, I always feel saddened almost Mm. that they don't have a chance to build their career. And if they do have that platform, I have no doubt that they'll go to uh, international level and make Korea proud. Right, so you're trying to build that platform for MMA and for these fighters. What's interesting though is you do your channel in Korean, even though you're based in New Zealand, right? Yes. Yeah. So you're based in New Zealand uh, where you've uh, grown up uh, with your family. Mm -hmm. You're making these videos in Korean. Do you have any plans to make your videos into English as well, seeing as if you want to put these uh, people, especially the Korean scene, up on an international level? Well, the reason why I started this channel was because there were no other channels devoting uh, their whole channel to MMA in Korea. Mm. But if you look at elsewhere, there are channels that are much bigger than mine that's already focusing on MMA. Mm. So maybe if our channel gets bigger and bigger and we uh, gain more attraction for other countries, maybe we'll start English content. But for now, I would like to focus on Korea and Korean market and try to make this whole sport more bigger and more approachable. Right, so you want to start in Korea first, mm. grow the sport here in Korea, and then maybe in at one day it'll be an internationally you can start promoting Korean exactly. fighters as well. Who are some of your favorite fighters here in Korea at the moment? Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware how the name of the, our channel started. It's Chadoru, mm. which is actually short for Chabunan Hyodoru. Okay. So, so it means calm failure. Hyodoru is failure in English. and he Calm is, as in like peace and calm. Yes, yes. yes. Because I, I felt like that my voice, the tone of my voice is much calmer than most other YouTubers. Mm. So, I, so it's almost like an homage to Fedor because I like mm. him so much. Okay. And, and Fedor in Korean comes out as Hodoru. Yes, that's right, correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so his full name is Fedor Emelianenko, but it was too long. So, mm. And I mean, it's, it's not just because I like him, but the reason why I like him is... I'm not sure how much you are familiar with MMA, but the main difference between mixed martial arts and other combat sports like boxing or kickboxing is that in MMA, if the fight goes to the ground, it doesn't stop. For example, in boxing, if someone goes to the ground, the referee stops the fight and counts to 10 and see if the athlete can get up and fight again. But in MMA, unless someone gets knocked out unconscious or the referee intervenes or someone taps out and gives up, the fight continues. And Fedor, I would like to call and describe him as the god of ground and pound, Mm. which is striking your opponent from the top position when they're on the ground. So I have to say Fedor is my favorite fighter. Fedor's your favorite fighter, but he's not Korean, right? No, no, he's okay, Russian. Okay. What about the Korean scene? How is the Korean fighters doing? How far away they, are they from getting international recognition at the moment? Well, I'm, I'm not too sure if you're familiar with top UFC Korean fighters like Chen Sung Jung, the mm. Korean zombie, mm. uh, Dong Hyun Kim, who's mm. been on TV a lot. Um, I've heard those names. All oh, right, and mm. Duho Choi. I mean, even Korean zombie, it's, it, mm. that's such a great name. Do you yeah, know what I mean? That's such a catchy name. It that, is. Uh, even if you don't know MMA that much, even in passing, mm. you'll have seen that name. I mean, if you watch UFC press conferences, the mm. president Dana White, even him wears Korean zombie T-shirts and hoodies when he goes to these <laughs> events. Right. So, so he is a super. He is an international superstar mm. outside of Korea, which 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 makes me sad because I feel like he deserves more recognition and appreciation in Korea. Like, if he wins a fight, there'd be a small article online, and I think. Uh, his, his accomplishment is much bigger than that. And he is also the only fighter in Korea to ever fight for the world title. Mm. So I think these guys need more recognition. And even Dong Hyun Kim, he, he, uh, he's a funny guy and he's entertaining on TV. But if you look at his career, uh, during the peak of his career, he was one of the top 10 fighters in the world, which is a huge, huge accomplishment. Sorry, which is huge. Mm. Yeah. And if you look at Tuho Choi as well, he's a world-class striker. And the thing about UFC is... They don't give you easy fights. Mm. They will match you up with the toughest guys that's available. So Duo Choi, even though he's coming out uh, uh, from a loss from Busan last year, I do think that he's going to come back and show his full potential very soon. What do you think needs to change for these fighters to get more recognition here, I think, in Korea? Well, I think they need more exposure. 
Yeah, I think we need more YouTubers like me who are focusing on MMA. I think there needs to be more news coverages. I think, like I said before, there needs to be more promotions and organizations for uh, younger guys to come up as well. Because as you know, the reason why MMA was su so successful outside of Korea, uh, in America, for example, is because of these superstars like mm. Ronda Rousey or Conor McGregor like the faces of the organization, faces mm -hmm. of the sport. And I have no doubt that the fighters that I've mentioned before from Korean Zombie Dong and Kim to Duho Choi will be the faces of MMA in Korea. Finally, what are your plans for the channel then going forward? What kind of things do you want to do? Well, I really enjoy what I'm doing already, but I would like to be one of the providers to these athletes. I want to give them the platform to fight, for example. What do you mean? You want to be actually hold matches hold fights that, that would be a long-term term right. goal okay, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. mm. so th that's always been in the back of my mind but obviously that needs a lot of uh financial security mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. a lot of investors a lot of people involved to make it happen but it is on the back of my mind and i want it to happen one day yes mm. so it sounds like you've still got big dreams ahead <laughs> of you even though you've taken a brave step going from being a lawyer to a youtube channel host we've been speaking to mr che kim kim che young who runs the youtube channel chadoru all about mixed martial arts here in korea it's been a pleasure to have you on the show today thank you